Welcome to myiacademy.com. I'm Professor Mafu Zusain. Do subscribe the channel to watch more videos on topography. In this video, we'll talk about the indices used in different topography systems. First of all, some general information about the indices. Older indices like Keysign KPD index were based on topography and not as reliable as the new indices which are based on tomography. Remember that the elevation and pachymetry based indices are better as compared to the sagittal map based indices. And then remember that indices take into account more than one criteria or parameter and generally they are very, very reliable. With this information, we start the presentation. Now, these are the Pentacam indices. All of them, they are the Pentacam indices like the BAD, D123, CTSP, PIT, Artmax, DF, DB, DP, DT, DA, and Total D. These are all Pentacam indices. Then we have got a list of series indices, then a list of Galili indices, and then some general indices which are not specific to any machine. Remember, that some of the indices have got 100% sensitivity for distinguishing keratoconus from the normal, so these are very important. And these, the bad D, Artmax, IHD, and IHA on the Pentacam, and SIF and BCVF on the Cirrus, and PPK on the Galili, they have got the 100% sensitivity for distinguishing keratoconus. And for the subclinical cases, Bad D IHA on the Pentacam and SIB on the Cirrus has got 100% sensitivity for distinguishing between the subclinical cases from the clinical cases. So as a whole, these indices are very important and very reliable, so we need to understand them in detail. First of all, we'll do the indices of the Pentacam one by one. Pentacam indices are displayed in a separate printout, which is, looks like this, and it's called Bad D Display or Bellin Ambrosio Enhanced Ectasia Display or Bad D. The Bad D has got three parts, Bad 1, Bad 2, and Bad 3. Bad 1 consists of, or it gives you information about the interior and posterior elevation data and pachymetry data. In the interpretation guides, seven step and 15 point quick guide, I did explain how important are the elevation and pachymetry data. So the indices consists of these data primarily. Then in the bad two, five more parameters are added, which is front elevation, back elevation, pachymetric progression, thickness of the thinnest location, and thinnest point displacement. So this is bad two. And BAT3 has got additional parameters which will be explained in the coming slides. Let's, this is the BAT display. Let's magnify it. Now what I will do, I will hide all the data and display the indices one by one. Let's hide it. First of all, the BAT1 consists of two parts, which is First is the elevation data, and the second component is the pachymeter data. The elevation data has got three parts, baseline evaluation, exclusion map. Exclusion map is based on the thinnest location and area around it, and excludes that data and gives you the difference between the exclusion map and the baseline map, and that will be represented in the BAT2 and the BAT3, which will be explained later. Second component of the bad one is the pachymetry data. The machine does, it makes 22 imaginary circles around the thinnest location and then measures the pachymetry data and then presents that data in the Bellin lines. These Bellin lines are CTSP and PIT lines and these will be explained later. Now this was all about the bad one has got two components, elevation data and pachymetry data, and indices based on that. Then the BAT2 has got one, 
two, three, four, five, and six components, and which are front elevation, back elevation, pachymetric data, thinnest location, and displacement of the thinnest location, and the total D. This is BAT2, and then BAT3 has got three components itself, the K1, K2, K max, and Q value and QS, then the front elevation and the back elevation, and then the progression index and the art max. All these will be explained one by one, so we start with the bad one indices. The first component, the first component of the bad one is based on elevation data. So you have got the baseline elevation, then the exclusion map, and then the difference between the two maps, and these will be presented, are represented in the bad two and bad three. Second component is based on the pachymeter data and the machine makes 22 imaginary circles centered at the thinnest point and with the increased diameter of 0.4 millimeter steps and it calculates the CTSP which we also call Bellen line. So this is the Bellen line. Remember four things about the Bellen line. First, it should follow, the red line should follow the dotted lines or in between that till six millimeter mark. Second is the shape should be regular. It should not be deviated or should not be S-shaped or should not be irregular. It should follow the dotted line. The third is the red line can be with or between the dotted lines. And number four, the PROG index, which is over here, should be less than 1.2. So these are the four points you need to look for the Bellen line or CTSP. Then comes the PIT. PIT is the second line over here. And again, the line should follow the dotted line and should be in between and shouldn't leave it till the marks six. Then the bad two. BAT2 had got five parameters. Now, the BAT2 is very important. Actually, for me, it's more important than anything else. Remember, in the 15-point guide, we said that you need to look for the five basic parameters, and then the remaining will confirm or correct it. Now, the five basic parameters are posterior elevation, which is the DB, front elevation, which is the D front, thinnest location, which is the DT, and the Y-coordinate, which is the thinnest location displacement. So that's how important the BAD2 is. Now BAD2 has got five components. DF is the changes in the front elevation. DB is the changes in the posterior or back elevation. DP is the changes or pachymetric progression. DT is the thickness of the thinnest location, which is TL actually, and then the DA, I call it DD because it's easy to remember DD and that makes more sense. DA, which I call DD, is the thinnest point displacement. So D here stands for displacement. So DA is the thinnest point displacement and total D is considering all the five parameters. Remember one thing, any five of them, if it is white or less than six, it is white. Between 1.6 and 2.6 standard deviation, it's shown as yellow. And 2.6 or above standard deviation, it is denoted as red. Remember here, D stands for deviation from the mean or standard deviation from the mean. Now in this example, DF or the front elevation, DB or the back elevation, DP or the pachymetric progression, they are all in red, so highly suggestive of catacornas. Now DT, which is the thinnest location, is in white. This means the cornea is not thin. And the DA, which I call DD, which is the displacement of the thinnest location, is almost normal. But the total D is in red, so overall, this cornea is most probably an abnormal cornea. So this was all about the BAT2. Now let's move on to BAT3. Now the BAT3 has got different things in the top section. 
we have got the q value and i've already explained the q value in shape parameters then is the front and back elevation so we have also done the front of the back elevation in different presentations then is the ppi or the pachymetric progression index it has got three parts the minimum maximum and average the minimum should be 0.13 average 0.58 and maximum 0.85 and these are the normal values for the ppe so we have got only one thing remaining which is the art max which we'll do in the next slide art max or ambrosio relational thickness which stands for ART, ART maximum. Remember, the cutoff point is 241 micrometer. Anything above 241 is suggestive of keratoconus. In this example, it is slightly less than 241. It's actually 219, so it is in a suspicious range. This is an example of the bad D total display. Look at that. Three of them are in the red and total D is in the red and look at the balance line it's leaving the dotted line before the six mark it's actually leaving it at the four mark and same is in the PIT line and look at the K max is high front elevation is high back elevation is high average PPI is high and art max is in a very suspicious range so this is indicative of keratoconus let me do let me do another example look at here only the df or the front elevation is suspicious all the other are normal and the total d is slightly normal look at the balance lines they are not leaving the dotted lines not leaving the dotted line in the pit as well here the k max is slightly high and the back elevation is slightly in the suspicious range. So this is a suspicious case, but not frankly a keratoconus or not a full-fledged keratoconus. And now we'll do the serous indices, which is RMS, SI, KV, and BCV. So let's start one by one. RMS are the root mean square. It has got RMS A, which is the front surface, surface, and RMS B, which is the back surface. Remember general rule, the low values indicate a normal regular cornea, while the high values indicate an irregular cornea. The RMS front, the cutoff point is 0 0.088, and anything above 0.13 is keratoconus remember the high values mean irregular so 0.13 is higher than 0 0.088 and same is the rmsb the keratoconus suspect is up to 0 0.212 so anything more than that is suspicious and anything more than 0 0.269 is indicative of keratoconus the next series in this is SIF and SIB, which is the symmetry index of the curvature. Again, the same thing. The positive values means steeper inferior hemisphere, and negative values mean steeper superior hemisphere. It's very difficult to interpret this particular index. KV is the keratoconus vertex, front and back, F for the front and B for the back. And remember, positive value means steeper inferior hemisphere, which normally occurs in the keratoconus, and negative value means steeper posterior or superior surface. BCV is the sum of BCVF and BCVB, and it evaluates the presence of ectasia through the analysis of coma and trefoil components. After doing Pentacam and Cirrus, let's do the Galilee indices and we'll do in some detail the KPI and some of the other indices. First is the KPI or Keratoconus Predictability Index. It's a very important index and 
it ge is generated using eight characteristic indices and 11 quantitative criteria. So it's a very well established and very good index for the Galili. And remember the KPI zero to 10 is normal. KPI 10 to 30 is suspicious and more than 30 is suggestive of pellucid marginal degeneration or keratoconus type of pellucid. Next is the AAI, which is less important than the first one. AI stands for asphericity asymmetry index and posterior AI should be less than 25 micrometer. Anything more than that is suspicious or suggestive of keratoconus. Then comes the psi or surface asymmetry index. It is the difference between the keratometric power of opposite points on 128 meridians. Psi is the best parameter to distinguish clinical keratoconus in all the clean indices. So it's a very important indice. Then are five more indices of the Galili. Remember CSI 0.9 is suspect and 0.7 is keratoconus. So if it decreases its keratoconus, DSI 1.73 suspect and increases keratoconus. 1.85 of OSI is suspect and 2.04 is keratoconus. And SRI, the normal is less than 1.55. At the end, we'll do the general indices. These general indices are not patent for any machine and anyone can use it and you can use it yourself. All these, these are patent for the different companies, so you cannot use it for some other machine. Let's do the general indices. Remember, these are the older indices. They are only based on topography and not tomography. And today's indices that we use in the machines are all based on tomography and much more reliable. KISA and KPD are the prime examples of the general indices. First is the SRAX or skewed radial axis. As we discussed before, that the two prongs of the bow tie, if they are exactly opposite to each other, then there's no SRAX. But if one part of the bow tie is on the one side and other bow ties on the other side, then there's an angle between the two. If this angle is more than 22, then that's called SRAX more than 22. And it, Anything more than 22 degree is abnormal. Then is the KISA index. KISA index, as I mentioned before, it all depends on the topography and not on the tomography. So it has got the K value, inferior, superior, AST, SRAX into 100 divided by 3. And it gives you the value less than 60% is normal, 60 to 80 is suspicious and more than 100 is keratoconus. This was the KISA index. And last is the KPD, which is keratometric deviation power. And I've done it in the section on the parameters. So we just recap, pentacam indices, cirrus indices, Galili indices, and general indices, and we have described them all. Thank you very much for being with me and please do give a feedback which helps to do the more presentations. Thank you very much.